Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Katie with Wild Blush Creations. Here is my tutorial for my Cellophane Wrap Power Wash Tumbler. As always, everything I use will be listed down below, so if you want to see how I made this tumbler, keep on watching. Alright, so I'm going to be taking a 30 ounce skinny tumbler that I spray painted white and I am using some alcohol inks from Jen's Crafted Gems. I am using Black Hole, Flamethrower, and TPOG. And to apply these inks, I'm just going to be using a bath sponge type thing that I ripped up into small pieces. So the first color I'm going to be going in with is TPOG, which is a beautiful purple color. And I found it easiest to put a few drops of the ink on a plate first and just dip the sponge in. That way I can have more control over the ink and it won't run all over. Because how I'm applying this is just dipping the sponge in and just sponge painting it on. And I'm going to be alternating the three different colors in a stripe pattern. So I didn't want to have any of the ink run into each other. So then once you get the first row of the purple applied to your liking with how thick and how pigmented it is, we can then move on to the next stripe, which I do in black. And I'm going to speed up the process of applying these inks because it is pretty self-explanatory and just by watching you can um, generally grasp the concept of applying them. So you just want to alternate your colors, sponge paint them onto your liking, and just keep going with it until you like how it looks and you don't have to worry about it blending too much because when we put the cellophane over it it's going to mute out the colors a little bit. So here's how it looks after I am done applying the ink and I am going to set it aside to fully dry for about 30 minutes to an hour. And now that the ink is dry, I'm going to go in and start applying the cellophane. I also wanted to add that I did not seal the inks with anything. You can if you want to, but it's not fully necessary. So I am going to be taking this clear opal cellophane. I got a very big roll like a wrapping paper size roll from party city for like five dollars and it'll last a lifetime and i just cut out a big chunk and i am taking my tumbler and rolling it in the cellophane to get a good measurement and cutting off any of the excess and you do want to give yourself a little extra wiggle room because we're going to be scrunching up the cellophane so it's going to shrink your cellophane down a little bit when you apply and you want to make sure it fully covers around the entire tumbler without any bald spots. And I have seen this method done a couple different ways and I've tested different ways out and the best way that worked for me is just to apply it in one full sheet. So here you can see I am crinkling it up 
and kind of spreading it out to see the pattern. Um, obviously, if you don't want as many crinkles, just don't scrunch it up as much. But if you really want to see a lot of texture, just keep scrunching it and wrinkling it up until you get your desired look. So now I am just double checking to make sure I left myself enough of an overlap to make sure everything is going to cover. And I got pretty lucky this one because I barely made it. And I almost had to start over because it almost didn't meet up. So really make sure you give yourself some extra material to work with just in case. And to apply the cellophane, I am using Eileen's Tack It Over and Over. This is the easiest method I have found that works for me to get the cellophane to fully stick. So I'm just taking it and squirting a fairly decent amount on to the tumbler, but you don't want to do too much. And then taking this Wet n Wild makeup brush and I am just spreading it all over to get a nice even coat and the only reason why you don't want to apply it too thick is because you do want to let it dry and tack up before applying the cellophane. And to help speed up the drying process, I am just taking my heat gun and using that to dry the glue. And all you want is just for the glue to be completely dried clear, that's when you will know when it is ready to move on to applying the cellophane. Now that I'm ready to move on to my next step, I am just going to be gently placing the tumbler on to the cellophane and starting out by smoothing it down on one side. And you want to make sure you smooth it out as much as possible to eliminate any of um, the air pockets when you apply. And you don't have to worry about smoothing out any of the texture because that will all stay. You just really want to get rid of all of those ear pockets. Otherwise we are going to run into some issues when we apply the epoxy. So now that I'm done applying I have this extra lip of the cellophane that I need to trim off. So I am just going to be using my X-Acto knife with a brand new blade to cut off the excess material. And the easiest way to do this is just to get as close to your seam as you can, because like I said before, you don't want to accidentally um, trim it over too far and then end up with bald spots of where too much of the cellophane came off and I did have a little extra left over that I will need to seal down before we go on to epoxy. And during this step as well I'm also going to be trimming off the excess from the top and bottom rims of the cup. So to do the top, you just want to smooth the cellophane over as much as possible. And this is also a very good reason to why you want to have a super sharp blade on your X-Acto knife. Because if your blade is dull, that is going to cause a risk of you ripping the cellophane instead of cutting it. And then it is going to rip down and leave little holes down to um, the alcohol ink if that makes sense. So you just want to do this part carefully and as I go little bits at a time if the cellophane does start to lift up I just press it back down so that way it has a good seal. 
and I go and I do the same exact process for the bottom rim and I do end up glittering the bottom of the cup which I don't know why I did that because I am going to power wash over it anyways but that's okay I kind of forgot about that part once I was doing this. And now for an easy hack to get rid of any possible air bubbles or air pockets that are underneath the cellophane from applying. I'm just taking my heat gun because the cellophane is going to act as like a shrink wrap material. So when you apply heat, it's going to remove any of the air that is trapped underneath it, which I thought was really cool. So now to seal off our seam and make sure everything is nice and flattened down, I am just taking that tacket again and creating a nice thin line all the way down the seam. And I'm just taking my finger to smooth out the glue, making sure I get underneath that little flap nicely and I can get everything to lay down flat and then I'll just be helping it dry again with my heat gun. And I'm just gonna do this until the glue becomes dry and then I will be setting it off to the side to dry for quite a few hours because you wanna make sure that the tacket underneath the cellophane um, dries completely before moving on to epoxy so that way nothing seeps out or seeps underneath or anything like that. So now that everything is all dry and it's time to go in with epoxy, I am using Flow Epoxy which is the fast setting epoxy from Maker Flow and I am applying a nice thin coat. And you can see that there are a lot of micro bubbles from applying the epoxy onto a textured surface. So what I am going to do to help get rid of those bubbles is just by using my propane torch. And all I do for that is I let it spin on the turner for a few minutes before going in with my torch. And then I'll torch it for a couple turns, wait a little bit, and then keep torching and then waiting, torching and waiting until all of the bubbles are gone. And because of this tumbler having a texture, I did do three thin coats of epoxy before I was ready to go in and sand. Now that our three layers of epoxy are nice and smooth, enough to the point where we can sand, I am just going to be taking my sanding block and going over the entire tumbler to help smooth out any lumps, bumps, or rough edges. And then, like I normally do, just creating that fine line of stainless steel at the top of the rim to finish it off and get a nice good seal from our epoxy. I am using my handheld Dremel with a 80 grit sanding band on it. And then going back in with the sanding block again to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And then once I was done sanding, I went ahead and I washed the tumbler with some dish soap and water and applied one more coat of epoxy before moving on to the next step. So now I am ready to go in with the first part of my decal for our peekaboo power wash step. And this is an SVG that I purchased online on Etsy from Bear Trends Digi Designs. I will have the listing linked below in the description box in case you want to use the same one. And next we're going to move outside to do our power wash portion. I apologize if these clips are a little wacky because I am not used to filming this portion of my videos but I figured it would be really helpful so I am just taking some Dawn Power Wash and spraying it all over and I'm making sure to leave the area where we put that decal 
um, with as le less soap as possible because we do want a very good coverage of the black spray paint because we are going to have an offset decal over the top of it. And then just rinsing all of that soap off immediately after you are done spraying it. And once that spray paint is fully dry, I am just going to go in with my weeding tool and removing all of that decal to expose our nice peekaboo effect. And I forgot to mention before, but the vinyl I used for this was the Oracle stencil vinyl, and it is so easy to remove. I love using it for um, the different peekaboo techniques. going to seal everything in with some epoxy. I mix up about 25 to 30 milliliters of epoxy and I am adding in pixie dust from Glitter Heart Co. As you can see, this is a very fine white glitter that has a blue shift to it, which I knew was going to be perfect to give this black a nice iridescent light sparkle to it but still staying with the whole spooky Halloween vibes of this cup. And once I got that epoxy applied, I went ahead and hit it with my torch again, and then I let it spin for about four to five hours before moving on and doing a nice light sanding, and then moving on to our next decal step. So now that it's been about five to six ish hours or whenever you feel like the epoxy is dry enough to be able to go in and sand i went in and did a light sanding on the surface of my epoxy and then cleaned it off with soap and water as usual and then i am going in with the offset to this svg and the offset is included in the file you do not have to create the offset yourself at all, which is why I love this file so much because it is so easy to use. You just want to carefully line it up as best as you can to get that offset perfectly on there. And then after this step, I went in and finished the tumbler off with my two final coats of epoxy, which I unfortunately forgot to record. And here is how the finished tumbler turned out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Bye guys.